Welcome back to First Move into a tale of transformation in Africa's banking sector and Nigeria's Access Bank, which has grown from a small commercial operation to a global financial brand. Not satisfied by that, Access now wants to provide banking services to half of all Nigerians in 2022 and act as the continent's gateway to the rest of the world. Herbert Wigri is the CEO of Access Bank and he joins us now. Herbert, fantastic to have you on the show. I think core to being that payments gateway to the world is expansion. And you've had an incredible year expanding, particularly into the south of Africa, Botswana, Mozambique, Zambia, South Africa. Talk to me about what this expansion is going to mean for, for performance. Well, let me put it this way, Julia. Um, it's something that we've been planning as part of our corporate strategic plan in 2017. And the whole idea had been to support our correspondent banking business, to support our payments business, and to basically ensure that there's greater trade within the continent. So for us, what are we doing? We're basically making sure that we have a strong presence in all the major trade centers in the continent to make sure that using Access UK as a strong anchor, that we can support correspondent banking and that we can basically build, you know, that real road across the continent that supports payment um, within, within the continent. So I think we're on track. I think in terms of profitability, our different franchises are doing exceedingly well. And I think 2022, uh, perhaps it's actually going to be a big, big year for the, for the institution. You know, the one that catches my eye is South Africa. This is a tough market. This is a mature market. It's undergoing significant digital disruption as well in the, in the financial sector space. What's the specific strategy there? Well, you know, Gina, we had the same thing when we went into the UK. People said it was a very tough market. Mm. And I think we want to be the strongest African bank in the UK. Now, what are we doing in South Africa? We're basically going to ensure that it becomes a hub for the continent as far as corresponding banking services are concerned. We will help support corporates. There are interesting niches in that market that are yet to be served. We will help to ensure greater financial deepening. Um, without revealing so much more of the strategy, there, is, there are interesting markets that have not been served that we will basically cater for. But apart from that, you need to see us in the context of a large player in the continent and banking several corporates in different parts of the continent. And putting that whole network together is extremely, extremely important. But besides that, trade is important, correspondent banking is, is important, and of course, facilitating the development of most of the countries um, within the South African context, uh, which is, of course, the largest monetary zone in the, in the continent, will be very important for us. Yeah, I mean, just to give uh, my viewers some perspective here, I read that 30% of your profits are actually going to be outside of Nigeria this year, just to give you a sense of where that profitability is generating. But I did mention in the intro, and I've seen you say it, um, that one of your ambitions is to provide um, one out of every two Nigerians with uh, financial access and with banking services. Where are you today? And to what extent are those that you don't currently service, um, are they being serviced by some of the digital players too? Do you need everybody? Do you need that many? Or do you cherry pick who your clients are? Is there room for all? Okay, we have about 200 million people in Nigeria. Um, there's still a very large unbanked population. Right. Um, we have people who sit outside of major commercial cities uh, who don't have a bank to basically service them. What are we doing? I mean, apart from ensuring that today uh, we bank about 50 million Nigerians, which means that we bank, what, 25% of the population. But in terms of the bankable population, actually, all right, we bank perhaps a third of the bankable population. Now, banking one of every two Nigerians takes us close to about 100 million people. Um, in terms of bankable Nigerians, it will be anywhere between 80 million and 100 million for us to actually get that figure right. So we're going to be pursuing this whole activity through our agency banking network and the fact that we've created a different type of branch network in specific um, localities that are outside of the major cities. And today, we're probably, what, ripping in about 700,000 customers every month. And I think that figure is going to grow a lot more as we get into 2022 with some of the things which we've done and some of the, and the increase in agency banking that we've done. Now, the question um, as to whether we need all of those people is the fact that if you went back 20 years ago, you would have said some of these customers perhaps don't have enough disposable income to be banked. But let mm -hmm. me tell you what, Julia, technology has changed that whole narrative. All right, there's a cheaper cost to serving all of these people. But besides that, we see ourselves um, as one of those institutions that is leading change in Nigeria by providing and ensuring greater financial inclusion. And that in itself will help to jumpstart and support and support the economy. So there are several reasons why we're doing it. And at the end of the day, 
it is profitable, profitable to bank them. High net worth individuals, private banking, affluent professionals is a market that we're very familiar with, but it's also a very competitive market and the margins are thinning out there. So what we need to do is actually take it down market and ensure that there's greater financial inclusion, just in line with some of the things which the central bank has been pursuing, by the way, to ensure that all of this can help the development of our market and ensure greater financial dignity. Yeah, I mean, I know you've virtually doubled um, IT spending between 2019 and 2020, so it is something that you're um, incredibly focused on. How do you choose sort of which customers you want to go to? I know you're incredibly focused on accessing women, helping them build their businesses as well, but there's also, when it goes back to, I think, the point that you've made, there are the Gen Zers who are never going to go into branch, and then you've got, at the other end of the scale, those that are like, look, I don't want to access via my mobile phone or on a desktop. I, I want that touch point with a branch. It's, it, even within the disruption that we're seeing, it's, it's a complex market and it's a huge continent. So, so let me tell you what we've done. I mean, there are two perspectives to the bank. You also have, you have a traditional bank that is serving customers who may want to go to some branches. But let me also let you know that uh, if you look world over and you ask yourself, uh, banks shutting down branches, the reality is that you still need a, a, a reasonable number of respectable branches, if you like. Now, we also have, all right, that digital solution that serves to customers who don't even want to get into a bank branch, all right? That Gen Z <laughs> uh, customer base are still being banked by, by, by access. Now, we understand that the fintech players may be um, getting an interesting proportion of that customer base. But guess what? At the end of the day, if you have a physical branch, even if the customer doesn't want to, to get into a bank branch, um, it helps from an integrity standpoint. And for the customer to just do that, he also has, has a place to go to just in case he had a problem. But remember that it's not just about transactional banking. It's about supporting other aspects of their lifestyle, of their lifestyle needs. It's about giving them a decent mortgage. It's about providing several things that some of which they're not even aware of. But we, we, we are making sure that we're serving that those customers um, um, properly, even as we speak. But let me yeah. tell you about women and some of the great things which I think we've done. Um, in 2006, we started what we referred to as the Gender Empowerment Program. Um, at that time, what we wanted to do was basically help provide financial services to women and help support their businesses grow. And we basically set a target working with the IFC of how many women we wanted to grow and what thresholds we wanted to take them as far as uh, their turnovers and profitability is concerned. We did extremely, extremely well, Julia. And let me put it this way. I think we had less than 1% in terms of defaults um, oh. as far as the loans that we got was concerned. Women okay. are great credit. Now, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's less social pressure. Diligent. I don't know if it's dialogue. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know if it's the nature of products we provided, but that was the reality. But eight years after, in 2014, we created the W program, uh, which is a more... Uh, a, a much more robust program is about and it's about inspiring it's about connecting and it's also about empowering women right from the professional lady who perhaps got married and went to have children seeking a re-entry uh, or the or the businesswoman who needs to be supported or um, the more more you know sophisticated business person who is thinking about succession and wants a bank that can help them all of those things were provided we took it deeper and deeper into maternal health care schemes schemes that no other institution in the world has, has basically looked at. And it's the reason we've won several, several awards. But coming back to Nigeria and what it has done for women, half of our customer base today mm. are women, all right? Um, and because they know that they will be served by access, and if they needed financing, they'll be supported by access. Most times, they have not even money. It's about supporting them with respect to uh, various programs that would help educate them on what to do, how to grow their businesses, all of those type of things. So that is what has made us so different and the fact that most women would rather back with access than anywhere else. Yeah, and I'm um, secretly or not so secretly very passionate about this. I have about 20 more questions for you, Herbert, so you have to promise to come back on and speak to I me am. soon or I'll see you in Nigeria, hopefully at some point too. Um, I'm ready for you, Julia. Uh, there we go. You've invited me now. <laughs> Herbert, we agree. See you at Access Bank, sir. Great to speak to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll see you soon. We're back Thank after you. this. Stay with us.